Hey everyone, recently Evo Skateboard posted a new video called Premium vs Budget Electric Skateboards comparing their Premium Evolve GTR to the X-Way Flex. This video has made a lot of controversy in the East K community, community for the past few days and a lot of people got quite upset about them making this video. Um, I did find it quite interesting when I first saw the title because I was thinking where the hell they could have found an, a pre-production X-Way Flex. It turns out that it was Jay Boston that gave them his um, review unit for them to review and after this um, whole story blew up, um, Jay Boston made a video on his YouTube channel about this and X-Way also released an official statement on their social media page explaining uh, the whole situation about this video. If you want to check those links out, I will put them in the description below. Right now, I want to review this video and maybe share with you guys some of my thoughts and um, uh, just in my point of view compare these two boards. And a uh, spoiler alert, uh, the X-Way on paper, it sounds way more promising than the Evolve board. So let's get started. Ah. What's up guys, my name is Maddie. I'm the content guy at Evolve Australia. I'll fly down to Melbourne this week to film at the Formula Ones, but due to coronavirus, the whole thing has been canceled. So I got myself a Sunday afternoon in Melbourne and I need to shoot something. I wanted to address what people are calling China boards. First huge misconception here. Um, I think he's just using this term China board to design all the boards coming from China and all the uh, brands, China brands that are making electric skateboard. But for me, using this, this term is a really negative um, side of thing where he's talking about China board as all the boards that is inferior to Evolve. Uh, one thing to know is that a lot of the Evolve components, or most of it, comes from China. So by calling out the China boards doesn't make any sense because their boards are also uh, made in China, or a big part of it. So a huge misconception here. Uh, it's all these budget boards entering the market, especially in the last couple of years. We see it on social media all the time, people saying, why should I get your board compared to this or that? Or did you know you can get the same specs here for half the price? It's quite funny because a few days ago on another post on their Facebook page, uh, another community manager with uh, from Evolve, um, they are not directly related to this video, also posted the same argument about uh, comparing their board to another brand that they didn't specify, but in that case it was comparing their board to onboard carbon and bamboo series. And uh, it's quite funny for me that after that post, they posted a video like this. And of course, after this video went viral, they went and deleted that Facebook post. Uh, so you guys have to trust me on this because I couldn't find it anymore. I'm not saying they're bad, but there is a pretty big difference. So what I want to do today is just run through some basic tests to highlight some of those differences in a non-biased way. So in saying that, what boards do we have? We have the Carbon GTR in all terrain. We have the Stoke, and representing the China boards, we have. I couldn't stand this. He says representing the China board. China makes so many different boards. Like, basically, all of our boards comes from China. So, X-Way isn't representing the China board. It may represent one Chinese brand, and I think they are one of the leading um, Chinese brand in the Eastgate market. So. It's not really fair to compare this to every uh, China electric skateboard brand. Um, of course, there are some bad brands, but X-Way is definitely a reputable and a good quality uh, source. The X-Way Flex. This is a brand new board. It hasn't started shipping to customers yet. There's a lot of... Yeah, so another note is that this model is a pre-production model, so some of the specs are, aren't the same as in the production model. So I would say this may be one of the reasons that it performs so um, unwell in this video. And I do sincerely hope that, that X-Way fixes all the issues that he's going to mention in th this video. A hype about it online, a lot of people are talking about it because the specs are promising. So what we're doing today is seeing how the specs on this thing in real life compared to what they say on the website, compared to a premium board. Let's get to He's really biased here. He just called his board a premium board. What is X-Way? I think X-Way does enter the category of a premium board, although it may not be as expensive, but the, all the package and the service is quite premium. So just by calling his board the premium board, this is just a totally biased review already. 
testing. Just before we get started. Another thing, just before we get started, he's comparing three boards from three different spectrums. And you just can't compare all of those boards. Um, on his left, there's the X-Way Flex, which is a long board. In the middle, there's the Evolve Carbon GT, which is um, a GTR, which is an all-terrain board with all-terrain wheels right here. And on his right, there's the Stoke. This is three completely different boards, which you can't compare them side by side like this. Someone might want to buy all three boards for different purposes. You can own all, or all of those three boards and have them use them for different purposes. So they are made for different purposes and yeah, comparing them wouldn't be ideal. Uh, a better thing to do might to switch those AT wheels to urethane wheels. So it might be a fairer comparison, but right here, that's what we got. All these boards are at 100% battery and they're all gonna be in the highest, highest of the speed mode. So we get the fastest top speed, fastest acceleration and all the rest. I do weigh 100 kilos, so I put a lot of strain on whatever board I ride, but because it's the same person on each test, it's gonna be equal. Let's see how they perform. The first test we're gonna do is an acceleration test from point A to point B over 50 meters and time it to see what the differences are. Carbon GTR, all drain. Go. Next up, we have the Stoke. False start, it did a wheelie. Lean forward. Take two. Go. Stop. I don't ride this thing enough, this is cool. Funnily enough, he got almost the same result on the GTR and the Stoke, although they're two really different boards. I don't know if, if this is intentional or maybe it's like, um, I don't know if this is intentional from Evolve or maybe it's a coincidence, but the GTR and the Stoke have different batteries and different ga gearing ratios, so they shouldn't get so similar at times. But I, I think this is just a pure co coincidence. <laughs> Next up is the X-Way. This is my very first time riding the board. He should probably not review this if this is the very first time he is riding this board. So I'm gonna go full trigger. Let's see what happens. Right. And go. Okay. Let's call that one user error. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Take two, three, two, one, go. Oh, it doesn't start. Huge lag. So, what happened there was I hit the accelerator the first time and the board didn't move. I was leaning forward. That looks like a really smooth acceleration, so I'm not too sure if he um, put his X-Way on the highest mode, and a lot of users uh, pointed this out as well, but it does look like a really smooth acceleration, and it's probably not on the highest mode right there, but maybe it is, or uh, yeah, we, we can't really know at this point. So it's got a bit of a lag. I'm going to do another launch and do my best to get the, the wheel in and the wheels so you can see when I push it and when the board starts moving. And now for comparison's sake, let's do the same thing with the Carbon GTR. Mid-testing and we just I met... I don't know if that lag was so... Uh, there was such a big difference in the lag, but for me, those two boards started at the same time. Or maybe I just didn't look at it well, but for me, they just went straight away at the same time. Shiva, <laughs> there he is. Bought a brand new Carbon GTR. When did you get it? Uh, just two weeks ago, actually. I love it. It is phenomenal. It's, um, yeah, had a uh, wow go to us before, but this thing is out of control and I couldn't recommend it anymore. So, absolutely awesome. The test we're doing at the moment yeah. is comparing how premium boards... Calls himself a premium board boards. again. Uh, it's just not even a competition, really, to be honest. Yeah. He, he's not biased. 
I can be biased, I, I but... Just, okay, I, I think if you spend more than $1,000 or $2,000 on a board, you are a little bit biased about your purchase decision. If the thing you bought isn't that bad and you probably like it, you will definitely uh, justify your purchase because you spent so much money on it. You don't want it to look as you spent all the money for nothing. So for me, if you spend that much money, you are obviously a little bit biased. And he says that he comes from a Wago 2S and I could see him write both boards because both boards have different purposes. As I have uh, two different boards, I have an AT board and a Backfire and they really have different purposes, purposes for me. So I really like to write them both. <laughs> I saved up a bit and um, and got it. It is just, it, it's yeah, not even a contest. It's so much fun and so different, especially the uh, raw terrain aspect is out of control. Like on, on the G, you can just go anywhere you want. So really, really cool. <laughs> Test number two. We're going to time how long it takes each of these boards to reach 30 kilometers an hour. First up, carbon GTR. Three. Two, I think I'm just one, going to jump this part go. because as we know the Evolve have probably this around the same time of testing yep. like they, they will get the same Three, result and the X-Way is far behind from his test. Until then it was very slow acceleration. The reason we're doing the tests like this is because they're not subjective, they're A and B, these are the facts. I don't want to talk about how the boards feel to ride because that's just my opinion, it's subjective. Um, we just want to lay out the facts so you can see that there is a difference between these boards. Not saying one is better than the other, because um, obviously price comes into play with that as well. When he calls himself, thing. as I said again, when he calls himself premium, he's biased as AF. He, he's biased already about his own product, so there's not much to say about this. Test number three is another point A to B test. This time we're going uphill. I'm going to park in. I'm Melbourne, going to jump so this part exactly again because Evolve wins this one with the same there. result with the both board and the X-Wing comes behind. Evolve compared to some of these other brands. We'll get to that soon. We're just about to do the range test for the X-Way Flex. Let's get going and see how it goes. Not sure what to make of the brakes. I'm going to jump in here from back at HQ because the range test didn't go exactly as I planned. Um, I ended up getting a little bit worked up and ranting for ages and that's essentially because I'm very used to riding a premium board. So going back to a budget board, um, especially in real life scenarios, it can be a little bit scary. There was an issue with the brakes similar to acceleration where it would take half a second or a second for the curve to kick in. Um, and that delay in a real world scenario would mean a car would pull out or slam the brakes on and it wouldn't it wouldn't catch up and I'd end up having to dart off behind the car or I step think off the board. He was, he's basically saying that the brakes are a bit soft as well. So maybe if the brakes are soft in his setting, it's probably because he's not on the highest mode. That's how I would put it. This is an issue that has been brought up by a couple of reviewers, Ronnie Saramento, Portable Electric Vehicles, and I, I hope it's something that they do fix quickly because it is pretty dangerous, especially in real life scenarios. That said, the range test. I rode for 8.2 kilometers from 100% to 50% battery. I know that's not ideal for a range test, but it gives us a theoretical range of 16.4 kilometers or 10.2 miles. But I wasn't prepared to ride it any further in the streets of Melbourne because it was all chaos. That's about slightly over half of the advertised range of the board, which is, isn't good. I wasn't riding overly hard, but I... He says that his range is a little bit over half of what they advertised. So let me show you what they advertise on Evolve board as well. So let's go on Evolve skateboard website. You just go onto their, their skateboards, uh, bamboo version, street version, and the range spec is at 50 kilometer, right? So by getting six, uh, sixteen point four kilometer on his uh, X Wave Flex, which has a battery of uh, two hundred fifty nine watt hour. Uh, by calculating that, we can see that he has a consumption of 15.7 watt hour per kilometer. Considering that he said that he wasn't even riding hard, this number is just crazy, yeah. Unless you ride really hard on the street wheels, you don't ever get that uh, high of a consumption. They, this is literally entering the old terrain wheel consumption category, so you don't get that much on street wheels. Uh, besides, if you put this amount of um, this consumption on an Evolve board with street wheels, 
uh, which has a 504 watt hour capacity, you will get around 32 kilometers of range, which is a little bit over half of what Evolve uh, advertised on their website of a range of 50 kilometers. So basically, if he rides an Evolve sk skateboard, he's only going to get 32 kilometers. There's no way with this consumption he's going to ever reach those 50 kilometers that were advertised. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense here. Um, if he gets such high consumption on the next way, he should get approximately the same on an Evolve. Uh, by the way, you guys might need to know that on average, people would get 10 watt hour per kilometer on urethane wheels, and that's that's really the average. So that's why Evolve advertised 50 kilometers because they think that on average, you might do um, 10 watt hour per kilometer. We'll talk about that soon. There's plenty of reviewers out there saying really good things about this board, and that's all well and good. But from someone that rides a premium board all the time, I noticed all the one percenters, so the, the quality of the urethane, the connectivity, the torque, the ability to go up hills, the, uh, the way the thing carves, every little thing that Evolve does. He just said that feeling was subjective, but now he just put it again with the way how the thing carves and all of that thing. So I think his review got quite messed up at the end. That this thing's lacking shows when you add them all together and get an overall picture of a board. So if you look at the top speed on paper, yeah, sure, they might be the same. But when you take the whole picture into account, it's very, very different. In my opinion, they've done a really, really good job at making it look exactly like a booster board. But all those things just don't add up to be the same as, as a quality manufactured board. But I think X-Way is a quality manufacturer board. Basically, he's putting X-Way category, uh, the X-Way uh, company, as every other Chinese company that makes electric skateboard. And of course, on the bottom, there would be some companies that are less good than the others, but uh, really good Chinese brands and reputable ones like X-Way, Backfire, Meepo, uh, they will make quality products. But then again, it's, it's a third of the price, so what do you really expect? There's, they're not making miracles. Forget X-Way, let's talk about Chinese boards in general. Over yes, he, he's jumping from X-Way to comparing to all Chinese board. So this is like, I, he's not even comparing their boards to X-Way, but their board to all Chinese board. And they just took the, the, one of the best Chinese uh, brands to compare it with them. So yeah, this review is totally messed up. Setting specs is something that they are renowned for doing. So if you're buying a board that says 20 miles range, don't expect that unless you're going downhill with a tailwind. Same for an Evolve. If you have the same amount of consumption that he has, don't expect 50 kilometers of range on urethane wheels. Uh, they talk about top speeds, but they never talk about acceleration. Uh, all of the hill gradients that they claim simply are not true. So next thing to talk about, why are they cheaper? Firstly, they often imitate another board, so there's a lot of money there saved in research and development that they don't have to do. Beyond that, they cut costs in build quality and materials, which isn't a good thing when you're going 40 kilometers on essentially a piece of wood. I'm pretty sure Evolve is cutting costs on electronics and perhaps materials on the older generations. There has been so many issues about their ESCs disconnecting and they never addressed that issue anywhere. There, um, a lot of people complain that on forums, on the social medias about their ESCs just disconnecting because it's their ESCs is, is maybe it's maybe bad, badly programmed, and they seem to never address that issue whatsoever. And he just he's just saying, yeah, going forty kilometers on an electric skateboard and having a bad ESC, it's probably not a good good idea to invest in an Evolve skateboard, especially if they cost like if they cost like two grand to buy. Thirdly, customer service. Electric skateboards are a technical product, so just like an iPhone or a DJI drone, things can go wrong from time to time. So what do you do when your board breaks? If you search the forums, you will uncover a mountain of customer service nightmare stories. From you will uncover a lot of Evolve nightmare stories as well. Trust me. Some of these companies. If your board breaks, you can't send it back to China. There are no service locations to take your board to get assessed and fixed. You can't pick up the phone and have a conversation. Best case, you can have email discussions in broken English and they might send you parts so you can fix your board yourself. 
When you buy online and offshore, you can forfeit a lot of your consumer rights in terms of warranties, returns, exchanges, or even arguing about the inflated specs that made you buy it in the first place. All those things that a domestic company is bound to give you as a consumer, you could find yourself in a little bit of a pickle. The purpose of this video isn't to trash other brands. It's to give you guys, the consumers, as much information as possible before you go out and buy whatever board that you want to buy. If you have experience writing both kinds of boards, jump in the comment section and let us know what your experience is. Keep skating whatever it is you have, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, he... So, I don't know if people would rather pay one third of the price or buy the whole board but with a better experience service because there's such a huge uh, gap in the pricing. I know Evolve does have um, like shops all around the world and they do provide a really, a really nice customer experience but for the price I think it's just a little bit much. Um, all those really big manufacturers that you pay so much for it's not really for the board themselves because the boards themselves aren't that expensive to make but it's more for the customer service so if you take Boosted or Evolve you pay so much just for the customer service at the end and for some people they might not even need it so why pay so much so yeah for me he probably just trashed all the chinese electric skateboard manufacturers saying their boards are bad and why you shouldn't buy them i will show you guys right now why an x wish on paper should be way better than uh, um evolve gtr so let's go back at the spreadsheet that i made so right here you can see that they are both using approximately the same motors so you won't find too much of a difference in torque right there but the biggest problem right for me is on the battery side x-way on their newest board they use a 12 s2p vtc6 battery that has a cap capacity of outputting 60 amps on evolve they use a 10 s4p samsung 35e their output capacity is only 40 amps so by looking at this data sheet, you can definitely see that the x board should have a lot more power than what Evolve has. Um, just by having just better battery technology and um, perhaps bigger motors, I'm not too sure about that. So yeah. So on, on paper, x should definitely be Evolve, but as I said, this isn't a production board, so a lot of things might change between these, this and the released model. Right now, Evolve is making a lot of videos like this or posts like this because they are quite scared about the market currently. As you guys, some of you guys might know, Boosted Board uh, went bankrupt recently or is probably going to go bankrupt. And they are afraid that the next one would beat them. So I could understand that they're trying to defend as best as possible. I, was, I would say this is definitely a wake-up call for Evolve as uh, Chinese uh, companies are getting better and better in every way at designing their board, the quality and, and the customer service. I would say the best Chinese manufacturers do offer a really nice customer uh, service. Competition is really what uh, drives technology forward. So I'm looking forward to uh, for Evolve maybe uh, releasing new technology, maybe going to direct drive or uh, just de developing new things because they have been uh, trying to make the same stuff for years right now and hopefully we will we'll see something new so right guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, this is the first time i make a format like this so if you have any comments or criticism about this video you can drop me a comment right below um so right i'll see you guys next time